actually, there's much about this bill that I like. I think they were very creative about helping small businesses. I agree that individuals and working families need a helping hand right now. So I have no trouble with that part of the package. $500 billion in corporate bailouts, I think, could be far better used. I think we could do more for small businesses, for example. I think we could prepare for the mental health crisis that's going to ensue here. I think we could be preparing for domestic violence and child abuse cases that are going to skyrocket. But corporate bailouts in general don't work particularly well. We remember GM and Chrysler. Ford did not take the bailout. They were then at a competitive disadvantage later, even though they were the stronger company. Uh, Small businesses that supplied General Motors and Chrysler were crushed. They lost more employees. Uh, jobs that never returned than the jobs that were saved in the bailout. Boeing hasn't particularly operated in a way that I think um, requires them or allows them to deserve a bailout. The airlines have been, you know, loading up on cheap debt and buying back their stock to the tune of $46 billion over the last eight years, and the cruise industry has avoided American flagging so they can avoid taxes and regulations. So it's the $500 billion Mm -hmm. of the corporate bailout that I object to. I think it is not taxpayer money well spent, and I don't think the companies honestly have earned it, and they have vast resources at their disposal through some of the backstops and extraordinary measures that the Federal Reserve has taken. I mean, Carly, there's certainly some unpalatable parts of any corporate bailout, and and you listed some of them very, uh, very aptly there. But just to be clear, I mean, you're happy to let these companies go bust and all the jobs go away. You think that's a a price that's worth paying to get over the sour taste that, that a bailout would leave in someone's mouth? I guess what I don't really understand is how we've come to this place where we think it's a bailout or nothing. The bankruptcy laws in this country work. The airlines, for example, have continued to fly and pay their employees through bankruptcy. It's not unprecedented. And so I think the notion that all the jobs will disappear and no one will get paid unless these companies are bailed out simply isn't factual. Now, I do believe, by the way, that these companies have been lobbying the government for this. I absolutely understand that a bailout pops their stock and bankruptcy doesn't. I think big business is very effective at lobbying big government. But I don't think it's accurate to say the only option here is a bailout or companies disappear, not companies of this size and this strength. Carly, the difference here versus 2008 is that you know, this is a forced economic sudden stop to prevent more deaths and more people getting sick in this country. I mean, this is not bailing out. Um, we're not sure if we could hear Sarah's uh, mic there, Carly, but uh, I could I'll pick up in, yes, in, in, in the meantime. Yeah, no, I, she oh, well, was saying... Well, and she, go ahead. She was saying, and she's correct, this is an economic downturn unlike any other. And that's absolutely right. This is forced economic stop. <laughs> it's also true, however, that because it is unprecedented, the Federal Reserve has taken unprecedented steps. I mean, the Federal Reserve has basically said there is limitless money to borrow to get you through this difficult time. That's a lot of support for these big companies. They are a good credit risk. I cannot believe that I think it's not factual that they will simply disappear. Of course we need to try and save jobs. But the truth is the small businesses in total have more jobs at stake than these big companies do. I also, I must say, don't like the idea of the government taking equity stakes in these companies. President Trump has been reluctant to uh, nationalize industry. Those are his terms. And that has explained his apparent reluctance to sign the Defense Procurement Act other than uh, for GM. But the truth is the Defense Production Act is not nationalization, as I understand it, but the government taking equity stake in an airline. Now we're starting down the path of nationalization. 
Yeah, Carly, sorry, my, my microphone was having issues, but I mean, one point that, that I wanted to raise is that this is so different than 2008. You know, in 2008, there was a lot of criticism of the bailouts because banks had bad behavior and then they got bailed out, you know, to save the economy. This is completely different. The government mandating a sudden stop in the economy and, and obviously the job losses are piling up. We saw 3.3 million Americans unemployed. So, so this whole notion of, of bailouts, it's really just relief, isn't it? To keep workers employed and, and keep unemployment benefits going so that there's not even more damage as, as a result of this crisis. Well, in some ways, yes, Sarah, I think you're correct. But unemployment benefits are going to keep going with or without this bailout. That's part of this $2 trillion package, point one. Point two, as I mentioned, companies can pay their workers through uh, bankruptcy. Point three, in a free market economy, it's important that market actors bear the risks as well as reap the rewards. And so when you have an industry like the airline industry that in the good times did nothing to prepare for bad times. Yes, this is unforeseen, but let's face it, bad times are always unforeseen. So was the dot-com bust. So was 9-11 and the severe recession that followed. So instead of strengthening their balance sheet to prepare for bad times, they loaded up on cheap debt and bought back their stock. The carnival, uh, the cruise lines now are asking for help from the federal government, and yet they have avoided U.S. government taxes and regulations for the last I think that's fair, Carly. I, I think it's fair, but don't you think a, a wave of bankruptcies would make this whole economic and financial crisis even worse and, and inflict more pain when the cause, yes, they can reexamine their behavior, but the cause of, of the pain right now is not a, anyone's fault. I agree. The cause of the economic slowdown is no one's fault. Absolutely right. I'm only trying to make the point that it is a company's responsibility to prepare for bad times in good times. That is part of a CEO's job. It's a huge part of a CEO's job. And so when companies fail to do that, and then the bad times come, and yes, this is an unprecedented bad time, I'm not sure the first thing we should let them do is stick their hand out and ask for help. There are a lot of parts of the economy, honestly, that need more help right now than these big companies. Maybe they will need help later, but that's what I meant when I Carly, said too much Carly, too airlines are seeing, air, airlines are seeing 90% revenue drops. I mean, you are yep, a CEO. Yep. You can't and run your small, business and prepare for that kind of hit. That's right, and so does the corner restaurant seeing a 90% drop in their revenue. That's exactly right. My only point is that big companies like the airlines have a set of tools at their disposal, including bankruptcy laws, including the full backing of the Federal Reserve, including a very good credit line with major banks that the small business doesn't. The small business is seeing a 100% drop off in their revenues, and they don't have the ability to pay employees right now. So you may be right. There may be a time. But I think as a priority matter, in this first bill, we should have been focusing more attention and, frankly, more money on small businesses, individuals, and working families mm -hmm. who are getting crushed and who don't have the same tools at their disposal than these large corporations do. Carly Fiorina, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.